Battle begins. Adrenaline's revving. But as soon as you land, you can't help but feel on edge. You see danger lurking around every corner, and you don't want to be the first to die. You start wondering, where is the enemy coming from? Where is my team going? What should I do? What can you do? Welcome to part two of our Carry Yourself series. I'm too much- <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, uh, Spiker here as well. Last time we prepped you to sortie, so this time, let's get into combat, specifically basic match. The first engagement is the most crucial throughout any match in GBO2. Win the fight quickly and you'll have an advantage over the enemy team. Redline your boost before reaching the first engagement so your supply is fresh and make sure to move together. Focus on engaging as soon as possible. When your suit is near death and your team has no beacon captured, eject and then capture the middle beacons. Middle beacons are the highest priority, while beacons near the enemy base are second in priority. As with everything, there are some exceptions to this suggestion, like in City Ruins, where you'll want to take the middle beacons before fighting. To clarify further, this is the strategy used for public matches only. We'll make a dedicated video on specific map strategies in the future. By starting a fight right away, you'll catch the enemy while they're capturing a beacon and down a player. Having numbers advantage makes a big difference. Conversely, if you or a teammate are capturing a beacon and a fight starts, you're now at a disadvantage. That being said, if your teammates take a point at the beginning, you should play defensively until they can catch up. You want to be a team player and ensure their survival. It's important to work together, not engage in honorable 1v1 fights. Except maybe that hardcore Gyan pilot over there. No. Now that we've talked you into starting the fight with your team, here's some advice to help you succeed. Tip number one, the game is right side centric. Your camera shows the right side of your suit and lets you peek around right hand corners with your right handed weapon. Because of that, you have a huge blind spot on your left. Suits peeking from the right can look and shoot sooner than suits on the left. Get an advantage by approaching enemies to your right so you'll be in their blind spot, which is their left side by the way. Sometimes it's necessary to approach from the left side to catch enemies or push them out of cover. But remember, fighting on your left puts you at a disadvantage. We'll talk more about left side fighting in the future. You might think, why do I have to push? Why not shoot from mid or long range? Well, each match has a time limit, so team pushing is the most efficient way to build a big lead or catch up. If you see a teammate pushing and getting shot, be a team player and get in there with them. Sharing is caring. Tip number two. When you successfully push as a team, you'll engage in close and mid-range combat, making it easier for your raid to get in and take out the support. Your team can downswing enemies, leading to fewer active threats. You'll also gain numbers advantage and create openings for your teammates to attack. Your team controls the pace of the battle. Once the offense gets rolling, it's hard for the enemy to stop. What do you do if pushing from the front is too dangerous? Tip number three, flank them from the right. They'll be forced to reposition or face you at a disadvantage. If the enemy confronts you, your team can move in with less aggro. If the enemy repositions, they'll retreat into your team's line of fire. Keep in mind, if you're pushing and your allies are at the edge of your radar or completely gone, you might be in trouble. Tip number four, imagine a chain linking you and your allies. When a chain is broken by cover or an enemy flank, you're now split off from your team. It would be harder for you or your teammates to cover each other. Focus on finding the balance between pushing and staying near your teammates so everyone on your team can cover each other. With that said, raids have some leeway here. As the most mobile unit on the team, raids can break the chain to flank. However, a raid should always be aware of their thrust gauge, allies position, and have an escape plan when flanking. If the raid isn't flanking to open up the enemy team, generals can temporarily break the chain to flank as well. Just don't take too long, or the front line will collapse. Now, tip number five. You can also use the radar to decide who to attack and where to go. If the enemy's arrow isn't pointing at you, they're vulnerable to attack. They're not looking at you, and can't properly react to your approach. If they are looking at you, you can lead them into your ally's line of fire. If you cover your teammates and make situations for them to cover you, you'll create a cycle where everyone is covering each other. It's a deadly dance of fun for the whole team. Once you start covering your teammates with staggers, what's next? Tip number six. Here's a flowchart to keep yourself safe while keeping the momentum. If nearby enemies aren't fighting, assume they'll aim at you. Fall back and fire range shots, using your stagger target as a meat shield. If there aren't any enemies that can interrupt you, go in for the downswing. After the downswing, now what? 
Are there teammates fighting enemies nearby? Stagger their enemy to free them. Take their dance partner. Are there enemies not fighting nearby? Assume they'll aim at you. Just like before, fall back and fire ranged attacks. You can't take that many dance partners on at once. Is there a teammate with your melee weapon out? Move away and let them follow up. Your teammate might lack awareness and melee you along with the enemy. Nice to meet you. If there's no one nearby, unleash your favorite melee or ranged combo on their legs to weaken them. With enough damage, legs will break and make a loud noise. Suits with high leg damage will trip after boosting or be forced to walk slowly. Like they always say, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few legs. With that said, let's get into the most important combo of the game, staggering into downswing. Step 1. Aim for the legs. If you're using an explosive ballistic weapon, keep in mind that it has a splash radius for staggering. Step 2. Once they're staggered, go in for the downswing. Many suits can land a guaranteed downswing after a stagger if they meet these two conditions. 1. The melee weapon has a quick ready up time of half a second or below, and 2. You're within the right range to downswing them before they recover. Anything longer than half a second ready up time may require a neutral into downswing or side swing into downswing. In this two hit scenario, lag or off time swings will allow the enemy to dodge roll or boost back and counter you. Same if you're outside the right range or your weapon readied up too slow since the enemy will have time to roll through your downswing or counter you. Exceptions to this rule are suits with very fast downswings, like the Galbaldi Beta and the Pale Rider VG where their downswings come out almost immediately. The Japanese GBO2 wiki can tell you the melee ready up times. Check the description for a link to the Japanese wiki and what to search for. Now that your team is winning the fight, let's talk about what you should do between waves. Tip number 7. If there are no enemies left or you have superior numbers, consider capturing beacons in the middle of the map. If those are captured, consider beacons near the enemy base. With a captured beacon, your teammates can spawn to hold a position, giving your team map control. If you're capturing an enemy beacon, ideally two pilots should be out to capture with one mobile suit to cover them. Two pilots speed up the capturing process. If enemy pilots spawn, the mobile suit can zoom in and use Vulcans to take them out or just step on them. Good ol' war crimes. If all enemies are wiped and priority beacons are captured, consider repairing your mobile suit or your ally's mobile suit. Tip number 8. Do not return to the base to do this unless the map is small or the fight ended near your base. Consider repairing only until halfway through the repair tool's overheat gauge. By then, the enemy will be ready to spawn. If you're near the enemy base, you can try shooting the base to destroy it or planting a bomb if it's less than 2 minutes left in the match. What about repairing during battle? You only want to repair if your legs are completely broken. Tip number 9. Get behind cover and repair one bar so you can get back into the fight. Even if you're not able to boost without falling over, you're still a presence on the field. Take too long to repair and your team will be dead when you return. Sometimes the reality is cruel and you'll still die, but hey, it's always worth a shot. Getting destroyed in battle is normal, however, don't spawn as soon as you can. Here are some guidelines to consider. You might not want to spawn if most of your teammates are below 50% HP because they may be dead when you drop in and you'll be joining them too in death shortly. How nice. Even if you spawn with teammates, you're still outnumbered by the enemy team on the field. You'll want to wait until you can spawn with enough teammates to even the numbers. You might want to spawn if most of your teammates are at least 50% HP and won't be outnumbered when you and your teammates spawn. Whenever you're waiting for your team to respawn, use the Let's Sortie Together quick chat so your teammates know not to spawn in one at a time and feed the enemy team. In a 5v5, you can spawn with 4 players once the 5th player has less than 6 seconds left to spawn. In a 6v6, spawn with 5 players once the 6th player has less than 6 seconds left to spawn. If you don't remember anything from this video, just follow this advice. Don't get hit. Hit them till they're dead. Easy! Next time, we might go over mobile suit skills, map strategies, or something else. If this video helped, please like and subscribe. Maybe we'll even be able to pay our bills. Let us know what you liked, didn't like, and would like to see in the future. You can also stop by my weekend GBO2 streams on Twitch if you have any questions.